Hi, this is David. Today we're going to talk about Power BI, a tool from Microsoft which is designed to provide visualization for all kinds of data. You can get to Power BI from the site powerbi.com. And right here, if you don't have an account, you click Start Free, and there are a couple different versions of it. There's a rich client desktop version, there is a, a, a browser-based version, there's a report server that you as an enterprise can use to deploy servers to and host them yourself. Um, I've already got an account, and in fact, if you work for an organization that has an Office 365 subscription, you may have an account already. But I'm going to sign in right here. And it's cached my credential, so it didn't prompt me for the login, but it might prompt you for that. And this is just sort of the bl basic blank dashboard um, that, that ships with this Power BI. There's a little video to get you started here, but my videos are better. Um, I want to get started by getting some data. And I click down here in the bottom left to get data, and here's the options you have for data. If your, data, your organization is publishing some Power BI visualizations, you can click on this one. If you want to get it from some third-party services, right here, you can click on this. You can see there are a whole bunch of third-party services here. In fact, three full pages of them. Uh, you can connect to a database, or you can just connect to a file. And that's probably the simplest thing. I'm going to click on Files right here. And files can be in a OneDrive folder. They can be in a SharePoint site, um, or they can be just on your local desktop. So this is my home computer. I don't have a whole lot here. So I'm going to select this forestfires.csv. That's a file that I received from uh, the University of California at Irvine, I think it was. In fact, I'll show it to you here. This file is a common delimited file and has some information about uh, oh, XY coordinates in a particular park. And these the month and the day. These are some statistics that have to do with forest fires. There's the temperature, the relative humidity, wind, rain, area. Uh, I actually added this one in month here to be the, the number of the month. It's kind of hard to see here, but if I open it up in Excel, it makes it a little bit easier to see. So here's the data in rows and columns. And this end month here is kind of interesting because I, I brought a little formula to c convert the month as a three-digit abbreviation into the ordinal month, 1 through 12. All right, so I, I've done that. That's actually what I brought into here. And now I click on View Data Set, and I get this design surface right here. And from here, I can start adding some things to it. So by default, it'll just add one. I'm interested in, uh, let's see, how about the end month? And I want to know about um, the temperature. So the temperature by month. And there it is, right there. So for the 12 months, you can see that uh, temperatures are a lot higher in months 8 and 9 than they are in months 1 and 2. Well, that makes sense. It's the summertime. This is a North American or a North, Northern Hemisphere park. Um, but these actually, uh, you'll notice that when we look at this data right here, it's got the temperature along the y-axis, those are the values, and it has the month number along the x-axis. But the temperature is actually, if we go down here in the value, click on that, it's the sum. I probably don't want the sum. I probably want the average temperature. That's a lot more useful right here. So here we go. So it averages 20-some degrees in the summertime. Sounds like that must be Celsius here. And it averages, looks like, about uh, 5 degrees in December and January. Pretty useful information. In fact, what I can do here is I can add, come on over here, and add another visualization to this. Maybe I want to do the wind speed by month. How about that? And in fact, once again, I don't want the sum of the wind speed. I want the average wind speed right here. Let's go up to our temperature. You can see, by the way, here that December seems to be a much more windy month than the rest of the year. Let's go on up here and change this. This graph here looks pretty good, but maybe it would be better as a line graph. Maybe that makes more sense, and it's connected these lines together. Or maybe we'd like it better as a bar graph. Eh, I'm not a big fan of bar graphs or of these donut graphs. I actually like line graphs. They have a really high data to ink ratio. And there's a lot of information here with a lot of less ink to distract me. And um, 
now I have the average temperature, I can actually add other visualizations to the same graphic. One way I could do that is to select the graphic itself and select some other value, like the rainfall. That would be the sum of the rainfall. That's actually not that interesting. What I think would be really interesting is to add, right now I've got the average temperature. Maybe I want to have the, the minimum and maximum temperature as well. And I can do that by taking temperature right here and just dragging it onto this graphic. And now I've got two lines here. One of them was the average temperature, and the other one, it always defaults to sum, so I want to change that to minimum. And then I want to drag it again and change this one from sum to maximum. And now right here we have something interesting here. We can show that how what kind of variance, very little variance here in the month of November, lots of variance in the summertime between min and max. That's actually some a pretty nice graphic here. Maybe I want to visualize it like this or in some other way, maybe like that. Maybe this makes more sense to me. It's up to you how you want to actually visual, visualize that. You have these options just by pointing and clicking on this service. So there's something to get you started. These are the basics of Power BI. They allow you to quickly create visualizations of your data in ways that make sense to you. This is David. Thank you for watching.